So, uh, my name is Vitor Oliveira. I've been working for um, with group application and optimizing group application and on performance, basically, uh, for the last times. So, uh, what I'll be doing today is presenting um, some ways that you can, some options and some ways that you can optimize group application for performance. Okay. So. I'll skip this, you have seen it, and this will also go. So, um, I'll try to explain better than showing benchmarks and everything, and we all know that benchmarks have a purpose, have many purposes, but actually, um, for a production user, they mean very little because they need to run it with their uh, workload, and they are just uh, metrics that you can use to try to understand what's happening. But the, the real benchmark is the workload that we need. So I'll, instead of that, I'll try to explain how it works behind the, the scenes uh, in some things that impact performance so that then each person can check what the workload is, is doing. OK, so let me start with this anatomy of group application. So uh, in group application, we have uh, uh, basically two big parts. So we have the transaction, and after a transaction is prepared, so it executes, and it's ready to uh, on a node, and it's ready to be propagated. We group application enters at this point where it's ready to commit, and then it gathers the right set information. Then it does what I call is a, a throttling point. So I'm going directly to these details because I, I think people here prefer this lower level things. Okay. So then we go to the details of uh, delays if needed, and then we send the message out to ordering on group application, as Alfredo was showing. Okay. Then uh, at this point, the thread just waits. It just waits there for something to happen, and that something is going as the transactions going to the network, being ordered in a, in agreement with all nodes, and then getting back to the certification on that same node. And this is what's happening here. Okay, so then once the certification result is in, then the thread can continue. And at that point, the certification is either positive or negative. So, so it's there is either a conflict or there's no conflict, and we can go on. And then we decide to commit or not. This is basically the the main entry point for group application. Uh, which also means that if someone traces the what's the application doing or something, why is group application slow? This is not where you'll be seeing it much, okay? Because it would you would just send it to the network and then wait for something to happen outside. The second part is this one, where indeed we have uh, a loop that handles the the, um, the data that gets in, in from the network ordered. And at that point, we have the we receive the transactions, get them ordered, and we get a transaction one by one, and then decide to certify and then see according to the the state in each node, the JIT executed in each node, and the the information that comes on the right side from the network. We decided if they are they are compatible, that we can proceed with that transaction, or if you have to abort. This is deterministic because everything, all the nodes receive their transaction in the same order. So the decision is the same on all nodes. This is what makes the multi-master system work. Okay, But there's a, here a split, which is if the transaction is local, we don't have to do anything else than, OK, saying, fine, commit, and, and go on. But if the transaction is not local, we need, and the certification is positive, we need to store that transaction to be applied. We don't execute the transaction immediately. We just reuse what's already available with a synchronous application, which is a slave applier. We put it in the relay log, and then eventually it will apply. And this is the, the two main areas of group application, which means also that we have these factors affecting our, uh, our performance uh, the most. Okay, So of course, the obvious ones network bandwidth and latency. Slower networks will be will be harder to deal, but particularly latency, very high latency will make us drop performance. But this happens to everyone, so that's fine. You just have to adapt to that. And then the certification throughput also is a, an important factor because the 
the th certification is a sequential process. We do it in a single thread that decides what happens to the to the transaction. It's not a light. Um, it, it can do many transactions, but you will have to be careful with that because it may take longer, and then we start delaying the acknowledgments because of that particular thing. Okay. And then, of course, the the remote applier. Once they get to the relay log, they depend on the same thing that replication depends, which is the throughput on the slave applier and the number of threads on the slave applier that can actually perform the, the remote apply. OK, so let's see what this means. This means that these points here are the main contention, contention point. That, not, that one is not that much. It's a small point where we gather the right set information. It takes a bit. We hash it. But it's very light, not, not something very significant. But then we have this process. We have to send the message out. We have to reach an agreement and then wait on a certification on that, on that side. Okay. So this is the main contention points on the certifier. We have to make sure that the certification itself is able to keep up with the pace we have. And we have to make sure that the transactions get to the relay log at a rate that is enough to not delay the system. This can also be an issue. And again, the applier. It's, it's repeating. So we have a few options. We have a few options here um, that allow us to control this, this, um, this thing. OK, some are not very controllable, but for instance, if we have uh, high latency, of course, we can put more transactions, and, and we need to extend more, be able to put more transactions in the system, and then they eventually arrive, and we hide the late, we we keep a high throughput at the cost of increasing the latency on transactions. But uh, at the point where we intercept the the transaction, um, we have the transaction prepared, all logs are there, but then it's very lightweight. So increasing this latency, uh, you don't contend between threads a lot. So it's fine. If we increase the transactions, uh, parallel transactions, it will behave rather well. OK, but then if uh, we can do something, which one, one is, OK, let's compress the, the bandwidth. We have a slower link. Let's compress it and just send it. And take advantage of the fact that compression, compared to the network, can be at a higher uh, rate of compression. So we can mostly use the CPU to compensate the, the network uh, limitations. We can also reduce, of course, the, the bin log itself and use a minimal uh, so that the, the, the rows that we send are, are smaller. And then, uh, and then this is this one, which I should, maybe I shouldn't put this here, okay? Because this, uh, this is something for very low level. If we want to tune, in some situations, what happens is that um, we found this to be effective in some situations. So it's here because it may be useful. But uh, this is very particular, which is if you have uh, bursty net, uh, First, these situations where you have sent something, then you wait, then you send, then you wait. Uh, sometimes the thread that's receiving the threads will go to sleep. Scheduling out this thread that makes the reception uh, delays the entry of the th same thread again. So if we can avoid this to, for just a bit, and sometimes we see a, a big throughput because it never sleeps, and this depends on the network. So fine, don't uh, don't worry too much about this, but it may be handy in some situations. Okay. OK, so um, the certifier throughput. We have to certify, and as I said, we have to write it to the relay log. Um, this is then sequential. We certify and put the transactions there. Uh, actually, we tried a solution where we did this in parallel. But the benefit is not very big, because in the end, you'll be limited by the throughput of the writing to disk. OK, so in that Either you are able to handle that throughput, or you improve just a bit, but then you'll still be limited by that throughput on, on this. So take care of where you put your relay logs, and if they are indeed the system is indeed capable of handling the, the throughput you want. Uh, otherwise, you, if you may have nodes that delay the certification compared to other nodes, and that that can be quite a, a delay if you don't take care. 
There's also another issue that may happen when you have multi-master nodes, multi right to, to multiple masters, which is um, if we try to send the same GTIDs, use the same, um, the, the, to use the GTIDs sequentially in two different nodes, we try to get from one node and then try to get from another. Uh, what this makes is the GTID executed sets will be very large because they they are not able to compact. Uh, the digit uh, sets uh, compact very well if they're continuous. And if you have two nodes and they are trying to send the same thing, they will be building larger GT sets. And this is important for the certification process, okay? So if you use multi-master, uh, please do not put this to one, otherwise the performance will really drop as this, the certification itself, the certification info, will grow more than you need, actually. The, the consequence of this, which is not a big problem, I think, but it may work in some situations, is that the GTIDs will not be contiguous. So you have the GTIDs from one node that will have an interval, the GTIDs from another node will have another interval. Then when that, the, those intervals are exhausted, they'll get another interval. So you have GTIDs in blocks when you write to multi-master. Okay? But this is something that, um, by default, it's already uh, one million, I think. So, but please don't put this to one. Um, and then we have the applier, applier side, okay? Um, the, the applier side, of course, we have to, if we want to use the parallel applier, we have to use the logical clock um, scheme, um, scheduler, and we have to have enough threads to handle the workload. Fine, it will depend on the system where, um, where we are running this, and if possible, use more than less, but after a point, it doesn't, just doesn't pay to have more threads. And that point may be between 8 and 16, and depending if it's so really right intensive, 24, 32, but then we start having condition on the, the distribution also. So um, one th good thing about group application in the player uh, is that we take advantage of the information that is used for certification to improve the parallelism on the slave. What this means is that um, we are already decided which transactions are compatible or not between nodes. We know that from the certification. So we also know which rows in the transaction are compatible between themselves. So we use in group application, you use that information to schedule the transactions on the slave of player. Okay? And what this, this means is that we can ramp up much faster on the slave applier using the right set information than using the binary binary uh, group commit. Okay, a synchronous application which uses is that it mostly groups the transactions that are in the same group commit. It says, okay, if they all committed together, it's because they are, were parallel on the server, and we use that information to run it in parallel on the slave. But if we have a very fast storage, very very fast storage, and uh, only a few threads, the group commit without having some delays inserted will be very small, where only a few transactions will commit together. And in that case, we'll have little parallelism on the other side, on the slave player. If we use right side, right side information here from the group application, we can take advantage of the, this fact that we don't need the group commit to decide what needs to be parallel or not. So even with only a few threads, we can get already a lot of the throughput of the slave player. Okay, this is one of the benefits, and it's something that probably reduces lag in situation where we have lag right now with a synchronous application. Okay. So, one other thing that um, that we decided that, of course, uh, the layer also has it, uh, but here it's important for us to keep the nodes mostly. And I mean mostly close, but not exactly in sync. Because um, at some point, we need, if we let the master go at full speed in some situations, there's no way the slave can, can keep up. Um, and if we have a group uh, where, most, uh, where more than one member try to write, it's very difficult for them to write effectively if they are not uh, close. But for us, so we had to introduce flow control for this also. But, there's also some situations where we want to be able to manage the cluster without 
um, like for instance, one of the important ones is to add a new member to a cluster that's writing fast. So, uh, we, so we have a lot of write workload there. And we want to be able to get in the cluster. But the work of a node that gets in the cluster is much larger than the node that's just running the cluster because it has to store what's coming in from the network and also applying what's the, on, the, on the queue already. So for this, we introduced this, this flow control, which is um, one thing that works a bit differently. Uh, OK, I mean, so I'll skip the <laughs> performance things, the, the, the graphs. OK, so the, um, on this side, we wanted to say, OK, it's the writer that decides. We, we, instead of doing uh, like a letter to send a message or something like that to the server and say I'm delayed or something like that, no, we just send, each node sends to the, to the, to the server uh, one message per second saying, OK, this is my queue. Uh, this is my applier queue, this is my certifier queue, this is uh, the number of transactions I ex tried to execute in the last period, this is the number of um, transactions I have successfully applied, and so on. And then everyone that is listening on the network knows the state of all members on the, that network. And with that, whenever a member wants to write, it cannot write more than the state of that the system can withstand. So if we notice that the slowest member on the last period that has a grow as um, a queue growing beyond a threshold that we set. If that queue is larger than we decided it was the maximum, then that node is delayed and we check how much it was able to run. And then with that, we simply, okay, so it was able to extend 1,000. Let's take 10% for, for allowing it to get the, the old transactions and also try to keep it around this 1,000. And then next second we do exactly the same we try to always see if the states change and then we ramp up if everything is clear then now we are very fast and then we ramp up and then again we always do this one per second so it's a whenever a writer wants to write it will check the quota that's available for him as a writer and that that's it so you won't see any flow control messages other than this stats message going around okay but, OK, flow control also introduces some changes. But actually, the flow, disabling flow control does actually, in terms of throughput, does not decrease much. It decreases much if you put slow, low uh, thresholds. If we put very low thresholds, this is the, it's designed to, hand, to have a threshold that's significantly larger than the number of transactions you can run in a second, for instance. So it should be larger than if you handle 10,000 transactions it should be larger than that. Otherwise, it will be doing more throttling than needed. OK? So, OK. So, uh, that's it. If, do I need to finish now? If needed, I can skip. OK. So, as I said before, this is just an artificial uh, benchmark, not to the, the mean sys bench, which I like a lot. Um, it was great for us in development. So, but let me just show what you can expect in this configuration and with this uh, compared to a synchronous application. Okay. Of course, you have a, a loss compared to a synchronous application. We start where a synchronous replication would just commit, and we start our work there. And of course, we have higher latency. Those are the dots, dots and triangles there. And uh, but the thing is, well, it's we believe it. This is reasonable. We are, of course, trying to improve on this, and this is, we have overhead. But uh, this is something we are, um, it's great for us that we reach already this point, but we want to make it closer. And uh, of course, this is only for Sysbench. Let's see how it be behaves on all the real <laughs> users and workloads, OK? So, but uh, at least it's good for us to, to be able to, to reach this point. There is also the issue of multi-master. So, um, of course, we do not recommend it immediately, but you can use it. Um, and using it, there's some issue about the scaling with the number of writers. So there's a bit of scaling here, but there's, there's no big scaling from using multiple writers when you have a system that's fast enough. Of course, if you have many reads or only a few uh, writes, and you, yes, of course, you are exploring the, the write, read capacity in each node, and, the write, and the, then the write capacity will be enough to have some gain but well 
that's it. It's something you can need to study if it's benefits or you or not, or if, if if you can use it. And then we also see the growth from three to nine members, which is something which is also uh, good. There's some effect there on five and seven members, but that's it's that's okay. So there's no big drop, and there's no big drop because of what Alfredo said. The um, the XCOM layer, the GCS layer that's that's built below, has the capacity to handle this. So even growing to nine members, we still are able to to handle this well. And this is well, that's easy. Okay. And then there's also another thing that uh, Kenny was saying that uh, you should not use WANs. No, please. We just what we wanted to say was that. Um, it's not as optimized for once as we can do, and we were working on that, but you can use it in once perfectly. There's no issue there. Uh, but of course, what you are doing, if you put this uh, one node at seven, with some delay in a three group, of course you'll delay, but then you will compensate that by moving the, the, the line to the right. So you will reach a throughput that's higher, but with more threads and the same with the 200, the 50 milliseconds, and that also grows a bit more this way. So, and this is also, uh, uh, over time, the throughput, but this is, uh, this is not sustained throughput as before, this is peak throughput, this is the result on this bench. And we see there are small dips there, which Rene already complained about, has put the bird there. This is the, the garbage collection that sometimes enters and lowers slightly the, the throughput there. Okay, we'll also improve on that. Well, and that's it. Okay, so uh, right now we are waiting so also for some <laughs> feedback and trying to understand if the, how the workloads uh, behave and if we can indeed take advantage of this. But, no. Okay, so uh, the thing is, uh, and I can explain this, uh, the, the pipeline that we use on, uh, on the communication system has, has a number of slots, and those slots are configured, so having a very large latency will decrease your throughput. It will work perfectly, but then you have to know if you can put enough threads in parallel. So if you can withstand all of that latency there. So, fine. But you need to know if your application can really withstand such a, a large uh, number of threads. Yeah. No, uh, the transaction, one transaction, sorry. In terms of execution, where? No, if, if you put enough, if, if you use more transactions, you have more parallelism on the, on the server, uh, yeah, so. No, 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 no. Okay, any more questions? Ellen? Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, you're, you're saying that uh, we are using Paxos, Manchus, right? So, if I recall correctly, uh, Paxos with for majority, right? So, in your graph, when there was one node of three that was it says latency. Was it because you were writing to it, or is it because even when, let's say, you write on only one node where the majority is fast enough, it slows down or not? So um, that's the, the things we're actually working on. But the the, the main issue is that <laughs> um, we have to write to the network. So for one transaction, that's what happens: is we reach majority. If we have two nodes locally and one remote for one transaction, we we execute immediately. There's no more delay there. But the thing is, this works for one transaction. When you add many, then at some point, which is the, the horizon, uh, which is the, then it will start delaying. It will also start delaying if we immediately send large transactions. So if you send small transactions and you send only a few threads, it should be able to have very low latency. But then when you have more, then it will have that added latency. Okay, so 
yes, it should be a spec system because with that we, we should be able to immediately return because we have two nodes that are low latency. But right now we can do that only as a, a, a one case instead of in, in all situations. That's what we need to, to fix. Okay. Okay. Thank you.